Hey guys. Hope you are all doing amazing. I know it has been like one or two weeks since I made my last video. I have been busy with a lot of things in my personal life and given that GameStop hasn't had any real news come out, I haven't felt that much time pressure to update daily. As I said on my last couple of videos, and even the live streams if you tuned in, the price of GameStop is going to consolidate for a while, I do continue to think it will potentially go back below $20 if no news come directly from GameStop. Today I want to share with you guys all my thoughts about GameStop, the management, some of the memes that recently came out from the Roaring Kitty himself and what I expect going forward, along a really interest development. Before we start however, please help me keep GameStop trending so please click the like button, drop a comment down below and hashtag GME next to it. I will leave a link to my Discord in the comment section if you want to join us. We have day trades, swings, free educational content and much more, all available to you with a simple click. So, in case you haven't heard the news yet, the Roaring Kitty is being sued in court. I am taking this directly from the Stanford Law School Securities Class Action Clearing Horse. According to the complaint, the defendant, the Roaring Kitty, is being sued because he apparently engaged in a pump and dump scheme, where he shortly before his May 12th social media post on X, quietly purchased a large volume of GameStop call options on E-Trade at comparatively low prices, reigniting the meme stock movement and pumped the value of GameStop securities with his first social media post on X in nearly three years. After the prices of GameStop securities had abated, he pumped the value of GameStop securities again via a June 2, 2024 post of his GameStop portfolio on Reddit, disclosing his large position in GameStop securities including 120,000 GME call options and 5 million shares of GameStop stock, and then on June 13, when he quietly sold and exercised all 120,000 of his GameStop call options for a large profit, seemingly to increase his own stake in GameStop stock by over 4 million shares, belatedly revealing as much to investors on June 13 during aftermarket hours. This complaint further alleges that as a result of the defendant's wrongful acts and omissions, and the precipitous decline in the market value of the company's securities, plaintiff and other class members have suffered significant losses and damages. This is by far the dumbest and most retarded complaint I have ever seen. The plaintiff is claiming he was wrongfully financially damaged because the Roaring Kitty exercised his right to free speech under the First Amendment to share and talk about his investment. You know, it's hilarious that failed abortions like the single-digit IQ plaintiff don't realize that people all over the world talk about stocks and investments all the time on the internet. Hell, look at Jim Cramer. An ex-hedge fund manager whose stock pickings have certainly led to people breaking their entire accounts and he can't be sued. It's not because he has money or because he is popular. The reason he can go on national television and talk whatever he wants about any stock is because he has a constitutional right to do so, just as The Motley Fool and even JP Morgan do the same when they post those five stocks you should buy right now and five stocks you should sell immediately articles. What we are witnessing right now is the result of poor or total lack of parenting that resulted in the culmination of a grown little bitch who took trades on a risky stock, took a loss and now what's the roaring kitty to give him money. This is otherwise known as entitlement, and it's cancerous parasites like this one that give the rest of investors a bad name. Gary Gensler himself went on live television and literally declared that discussing a stock through social media is not illegal, so when the head of the SEC says that, it really puts into question what legs this lawsuit has because the Roaring Kitty has been pretty direct about his investment, he doubled down when he exercised his calls to grow his long-term position and even more so when he did that one-hour stream and talked about his view on GameStop as an investment and why he is bullish on it. This is anything but stock manipulation, this is what everyone does both on the internet and off the internet with friends and strangers alike. Just so you know, the plaintiff's name is Martin Redev, and he is suing both individually and on behalf of all others similarly situated. Let me tell you something. My GameStop position is red right now, and this man does not represent me whatsoever. I know the risks that holding GameStop has, I am aware that it could go to zero and I am 100% on board with that, because I believe that the company could make a turnaround, grow sales and revenue and become a prosperous investment long term. I don't know who this Martin Redev guy thinks he is when he acts like he is acting on the behalf of other strangers on the internet, but if you ever watch this video Martin, Please know that I highly encourage you to head over to your nearest Wendy's and go to the dumpster and give some Gok Gok 9000 to every degenerate that goes there. Maybe then you will be able to get back what you lost on GameStop, stupid an investor as you or which will probably lose it all again on your next trade, and don't forget to spit on that thing either when you get to work. One last thing, because this is even more absurd than anything I have said so far. 
On the very last page of the legal document, I believe that we get to see the plaintiff's position on GameStop. We get to see that Martin Redev had a whole 35 shares of GameStop. He bought periodically between March 13th and June 11th, and he also bought some options as well. The dude spent a total of $1,062.25 on GameStop buying at prices between almost $38 and $25. Guy is an absolute clown, buying at premium prices and upset the stock went down. His options were bought at significant premium prices, so I can see why he is upset but like I said, this amount is tiny and he can definitely recover working at a minimum wage place for like a week, and certainly in a single day if he can work that Wendy's dumpster like a pro. Anyways, as funny as this story is, it has some important lessons to be had and discussed, because even during my live streams, I saw a lot of people acting out of emotion and impulse when debating when and whether to buy GameStop. As I have said a million times, GameStop still remains a risky investment, the company was profitable fiscal 2023 but their sales are going down. Though they sit around $4 billion cash, the company still has yet to announce how they plan to put that money to work to grow the value of investors. When GameStop was running hot and heavy and everyone was yelling to buy as it was due to squeeze, I told you guys that I would personally be waiting for the prices to cool, because I knew that it wasn't going to be Moas back then and that the price of GameStop shares would stabilize, and I still remain situated in that position. I think GameStop is due to have the price weaken until the board announces what they will do with the $4 billion and I don't like buying at premium prices. Many people do believe that GameStop cannot break under $20 and I wholeheartedly disagree with them, and this isn't to strike up a fight or anything. I just think the price can certainly weaken and will weaken until the board speaks up, and given that on their last shareholder meeting, no real news came from them as to the direction they want to go, I remain entrenched in my positions. Could I be wrong? For sure I could be, but unlike the plaintiff we talked about, I like buying stocks that are well prices at discounts, not premiums, when I am picking risky investments. I ain't touching that buy button until the price of GameStop reaches $10 or below, or until news come out that change my assessment of what their fair value is. The reason I share this with you is because there is a lot of you that get carried away a lot emotionally when the stock runs. You don't see the averages or the trends, you only see the moon, and it can be very financially damaging for investors to trade like that, because all you see is the upside and none of the downside. I saw a lot of people YOLO into GameStop in the pre-market hours buying at $60 and now sit once again at an even greater loss than before because their averages went up. Remember, as with any and all investments, you need to have a plan of action, you need to have premeditated prices in which you are comfortable taking positions and stick to that plan. Don't buy on impulse, don't buy out of emotion, because that will only lead to you taking even greater losses in the long run. You want to emulate how I assess my approach, methodically, practical in reality and assessing risk management at all time. If we fly and we didn't fill up another 50 or 100 shares, that's not a big deal if you are already in the investment. What can really break you as an investor is watching your portfolio be continually read and enhancing those losses by buying at all-time highs. That can certainly create a lot of frustration and doubt, which can result in you taking emotional responses that might even worsen your situation. I have spoken to thousands of people across these many years and the amount of times I have heard individuals confess to me that they were read, sold at a loss after holding for extended periods only for the stock to run up weeks or months after they held when they could have made a buck is too high to count. And that goes into my second point, which has to do with the overall total investment money you guys put into GameStop. Remember, I am not here to tell any of you what to do with your money, you can spend it however you want. I will say, however, that many of you don't have well diversified portfolios, with well thought out plans. Too many people have told me that after becoming more rational, usually after the whole FOMO takes place when GameStop decides to run, that they think they put too much money on GameStop and are not okay with taking huge losses like that on the investment. Many have even gone as far as to express great disappointment in themselves and feel defeated. Furthermore, some even feel guilty about selling off all or part of their investments, because they feel they are doing harm to others by doing so. This is a perspective that needs to be shifted immediately, because it is as toxic as it is harmful. You as an individual have the ultimate responsibility to take care of yourself and yourself alone when it comes to investing. You aren't here to watch over the investment of strangers on the internet nor the well-being of any company that certainly doesn't give a flying crap about you, they don't even know you exist. With every investment, you have to know exactly how much money you are willing to invest in it and how much you are willing to lose. With GameStop, the shares I have, 
I am willing to lose them all to zero because the portion that it makes up on my portfolio is very small by comparison to everything else. If GameStop fails, I will be fine within a month, because I am well diversified across the best performing stocks in the market. I do still believe in GameStop and I am here to zero or moon, to the end, and I encourage you, dear stranger watching this video, to carefully pick how much money you are willing to risk. You have to always know how much you are willing to invest and risk and even lose with any investment, whether that be GameStop or something safer like the VU ETF careful well thought out decisions will give you the peace of mind to have the longevity needed to watch this company make a potential 180. So employ the right approach to this already and stop being led by sheep online that pump stocks already running just so that they can sell off their own positions at your cost. I wanted to make a video going over my own thoughts after the GameStop shareholder meeting, but decided to wait a bit in case more news came out. I see now that time passed and nothing happened. We had the Roaring Kitty put up a picture of a dog and a lot of people are speculating that this could be that he believes GameStop will be investing the money they made back into Chewy, which was the company that Ryan Cohen founded himself. We shall see if this is the plan or if the Roaring Kitty is just messing around in the coming months. In regards to the shareholder meeting, I will say I was deeply disappointed with what came from the board. I was expecting a stronger message, some company direction, and the fact I didn't get any of that was quite frustrating to me as a long-time shareholder. I want the company to give us an idea and clear direction of where we are headed, not remain ominous and quiet. Some people were okay with that, but I certainly wasn't. Furthermore, it was super interesting to see how many YouTubers, X and Reddit profiles were making fun and bullying their own members for expressing discontentment, doubt, disappointment and feeling discouraged by the lack of communication by GameStop's management. I too felt that way as I bet many of you did, and let me tell you something, you are in your right to feel that way. Don't let any of the clowns on social media bully you into silence and non-stop adoration to individuals they themselves don't even know. Think for yourselves, make decisions that are sound and do what is best for you. I still remain holding my shares but I still have quite a sour taste in my mouth by the fact GameStop still won't give us that which we want and need the most. Physical media is dying quickly and GameStop needs a plan of action immediately. Their silence is not something I am cool with and I take it as them also not having an idea of what they will do next. I remain committed to my GameStop investment, but I can also express disappointment in the company. Some of the people online have this toxic way that if you aren't living in your knees in total adoration of Ryan Cohen, you are a shill or a paper-handed clown who is wrong for expecting the bare minimum. Ignore these parasites online, Know that you are well within your rights to feel as you do and that you are also more than welcome to express your thoughts here on my channel comments or my discord, which I highly encourage you all to join once and for all if you haven't. If you are there already, you know we have a very open approach to all types of conversations and that we try to foster a friendly approach to all points. I like watching people debate points and disagree respectfully, that can only help everyone grow over time as points of consideration that weren't present in one's mind are brought up. Stay focused. I hope to see you guys on my next one and to the moon.